Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, February 5th, 2014. Just in case the time traveler happens to come back in time or we're in prison for a long time. Fear throughout the year. Anyway. Just finished my redo of CT5K week one, day two. Um, for the most part, I think it went pretty good. I obviously, on Monday when I did redo of day one, I definitely did a lot more of and a lot better dynamic stretching before I started running. Today I did some, obviously it was no near, not, not near enough. Um, but it had a lot to do with the fact that I took yesterday off. So anyway, by about halfway, my legs were feeling pretty heavy and tight. And when I was running, it's like every once in a while, my step with my run was, was awkward and Without me even telling myself to, my legs almost stopped running. I went right back to walking. <laughs> Until I realized what they were doing, and then I obviously stopped from doing that and kept running. So, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how day three goes on Friday. Um, they recommend taking a day in between your running, so I'm trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday with my C2 5K. You know, the thoughts are there while I'm doing this that I don't need to know how to run, I don't need to be able to run. Why am I doing this program? But it really comes back to the fact that I just want to be able to do it. I want to be able to say that I can do it. I may or may not go on after this and start running 5Ks all the time or start doing marathons. Or It's not what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting to run... 30 plus miles a week and you know all that kind of stuff but to know that I have the ability the stamina to accomplish that would be really cool and even if I keep telling myself that this next this spring or this summer that I'd like to buy myself a bike and go riding on a consistent basis it's the same thing, I need stamina, I need to be able to breathe and do all that kind of stuff in order to be able to do that. So, if I can accomplish the C25K and finish it, then I should not have a problem riding my bike for three to five miles a day or whatever it is. So, we'll work on that. I'll keep pushing for this. What else is going on? Um, I finished the first part of our month end last night. So I have a few more days of doing a lot of stuff to get the second, the last part of the month end done. So work is hectic. Um, I have my lifestyles fitness class to go to tonight. I didn't make it last week because I was sick and a couple other things got in the way and I, and I just didn't get out of the house early enough. So unless something completely unexpected happens today, I will be at my class tonight. Um, mentioned a couple of times to my wife that she can come with me and now we've been leaving our three-year-old at home 
with our son for an hour or two at a time, so it's possible. I just don't know if she would, if she's going to take me up on it um, or not. It'd be kind of cool if she came, but not really expecting it. Um, and today is, today and tomorrow we need to, today or tomorrow, sometime in the next two days, I need to do an official weigh-in for my six-month transformer diet bet, so... I'm not worried about that one, that one. I'm like 16 pounds under my goal weight that I have to hit by May. So I'm way ahead of the game on that one, so I'm not worried about it. I mean, the only worry I have is that I hope that when I weigh in, I'll never see the 300s again. Um, last week, there was a couple of times after I hit the 290, 298, 299 mark where I weighed in and I was just over 300. So, oh, the other funny thing is, is I just started to, I'm slowing down my diet bets. I'm not going to have so many going at a time. So I just finished two. I have another one that ends this next week. And uh, I have the six month transformer one. So I'm only going to do the six month one and maybe one other diet bet four. So anyway, I just, went into another diet bet for it just started today and I weighed in on Monday for it <laughs> first time I stepped on the scale I mean the last time I weighed myself was like 299 298 so I wasn't expecting I mean I was expecting somewhere around there so I step on the scale the first time with the word for the diet bet to make it an official weigh in and it said 301.4 I think is what it said <laughs> So I took the, I'm like, what, really? But I took the picture anyway, thinking, well, if my weight's a little higher, it'll make losing the weight that much easier. So anyway, and then after I took the picture and got off the scale, I was like, that just doesn't sound right. So then I hopped back up on the scale. And it said 298. I'm like, well, that sounds right, but, so I took a picture, got off the scale, and I'm like, wait a second. That's just weird. Why would it give me one than the other? So I reset it, stepped on it again. Sure enough, 298. So the scale gave me a bit of a worry. And then I had the ethical dilemma of do I use 301.4, which is obviously wrong for some reason. That was almost three pounds high. That was three pounds higher than what my weight really is, because I have the picture with the word, so they would have taken it as an official weigh-in. Or do I use 298? Uh, maybe I'll let you hang for a second. What do you think I did? You think I used a 301? Or do you think I used a 298? Yeah, I used the 298. I was really tempted to use the 301, but one, it's not in my nature, my makeup to cheat like that. It is part of my family upbringing that my parents taught me. It's part of my church learning that I've learned through church. So you be honest in your, in your dealings with your fellow men. So I use the 298. The other reason I use the 298 is because I never, ever want to be associated with the 300s again. Ever. So in the end, it really wasn't that difficult of a choice. But so anyway... I need to uh, I need to get going soon, get my son out of bed, get me and him showered and get him off to school. So um, I guess as a, an aside, two things. One, we got the deep freeze going on in southern Alberta again. It, uh, 
overnight it was like minus 25, I think. And when I woke up, it was about minus 21, minus 22. And with the wind, the wind isn't blowing very hard. It's very, very light. But with the wind chill, it feels like minus 33, minus 35 range. So it's cold. That's part of the reason why I didn't really want to go come to the church yesterday because it was about the same. But today I knew I had to because I didn't yesterday, right? And number two, I got here, and you've seen it in the back, but they have this set up. What is this, you ask? Well, I'll tell you what this is. Some of you will know exactly what this is. Some of you will be like, huh? Why is that set up in the gym? This is what's called a Cub Car Rally Track. There is a, it's way on the floor over there, but there's a, they got these little holes here, and there's a piece of wood that goes in here, with little piece of sticks that come up here. So the Cub Cars are big enough that the wheels go on either side of these, of these, and a stick comes up here to stop the Cub Cars from starting, obviously. And then when all the Cub Cars are up there, and they count down to zero, they drop the thing, and all the Cub Cars go. Whichever one they choose, there's three different finish lines, four different finish lines down there. They choose a finish line, and the car that gets there first wins, or they just let them go and see which one goes farthest. So Cub Cars are much bigger than this little guy, which I found on the floor this morning. But basically kind of the same concept. This one's going to have to go in between the tracks. So basically the cup car is here, and it stopped, and then they drop the thing and the cup car goes. But So it's basically just... So the, kid, the, the cubs really like it. Um, the, the cool thing is, is that they get into not just cub cars, and the cub cars are things that the kids and their parents have to carve. Like they get a little block of wood and they have to carve this car out of there and then paint it and decorate it and all that kind of stuff. And try and, they can't have it heavier than a certain height, certain weight and they can't have it any, um, anyway, they can't have it heavier a certain weight. So they have to keep it light, but they have to get it going fast and all this other stuff. And then the older kids, 11 um, year old scouts or or regular scouts, they get a heap bigger block of wood and they have to cut out like a like a semi truck. And they race those. So I don't know if they're doing the semi trucks this year, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. Um, good thing I wasn't doing any other kind of workout because it would be in the way, but running I can go around it, so.
And finally, I have day five of the plank challenge. So today, now it's going to get a little dark here in just a second. So today, I have to hold the plank for 45, 45 seconds, which I did okay with 40 yesterday. Another five seconds shouldn't be a big deal. And tomorrow's a uh, rest day with the plank challenge. So anyway, I got to get that done too. So check this out. Attempt one, fail. That hurts my elbows too. Right, lesson learned. Don't try to attempt two of those in a row. Your arms are super sore. Your back is weak. Try a second attempt. It's not going to let me. Well, Kurt, everybody, I'm going to have to uh, go, run out of time. I've tried the 45-second plank challenge three times. I can't even get to 30 seconds. The first time, I think it got over 30, but I didn't get 45. And then I think the next two times is under 30, so... Hopefully I'll still do it later on. I will try it again today. Um, may have to end up doing it tonight sometime as a somewhat modified. I don't know. Sometimes we do the planks at my fitness class, so maybe I'll ask my lifestyles coach for some advice or some help getting it done, and we can do it then. So. Uh, Talk to you later. Have a great day, everybody.